Thank you, Leland. Good afternoon. How's everybody? Good. I told I had 15 minutes, but Chubin loved to talk, so now I'm down to 10, apparently. All right. But uh, we are in the middle of camp, as you know. Okay, going in, we got day six practice coming up this afternoon. Uh, meetings start here very shortly, actually. So anytime you do something like this and you got meetings at 1 o'clock, you get very anxious as a coach, okay, especially when Coach Smart is the one that's overseeing all of that. So um, we are excited. The guys are working hard. Um, the elements have been hot, which is exactly the way we want it. And, uh, and so we're excited about where the team's at right now, and um, especially the tight ends. The tight ends are competing hard, but um, thankful for the opportunity to be here to speak to you guys today and open any questions. Coach, being from a small town in middle Georgia and Gray, how, just kind of quickly just go through your coaching journey from how you got to Gray to UGA graduate, and then go from West Virginia to Marshall, Georgia to Miami, and back. Yeah, that, that, that might take more than 10 minutes, but I'll try to, I'll try to be quick. Um, proud graduate, Jones County High School, 04. Um, and knew, knew I wanted to come to Georgia, grew up a Georgia fan my whole life. Um, had the opportunity to come here, got into coaching, okay? Um, thought I was gonna be a high school coach, and get my degree in, health, in, in education, be a health and PE teacher. All plans on being a high school coach. Coach Rick, okay, he's probably the greatest influence on my life to this point. Um, gave me an opportunity to come here and be a student assistant. And, um, I did that for three seasons, worked my way up. Once it was time to graduate, I no longer wanted to be a high school coach. I wanted to be a college coach. And so I had an opportunity to go to West Virginia University as a graduate assistant in 2008 uh, with Dave Johnson. Dave Johnson was the tightest coach here at Georgia. And uh, he got the O-line job at West Virginia with Bill Stewart, took me with him as his GA. And then after the 08 season, Willie Martinez called me up and said, hey, I want you to come be my defensive graduate assistant. I said, defense? You guys are the enemy, man. I ain't doing. I ain't going to defense. And he said, uh, it'd "Be the best thing for you as an offensive coach to come learn some defense." And so I came back in 2009 to be Coach Martinez's um, graduate assistant. Okay, um, there were some staff changes after that year. I was able to coach in the bowl game that year, the Independence Bowl, out in Shreveport. Grantham came in. I, I did one season with Coach Grantham as his, as his graduate assistant. In 2010, I got my first full-time job at Marshall University with Doc Holliday. Very thankful. Uh, for Coach Holiday for giving me the chance to be the safeties coach and the special teams coordinator. Um, did that for two years, and it seems there I was, I was stuck on the defensive side of the ball, okay? I was trying to get back on offense. The tight end's job opened up. Coach Holiday moved me up to tight ends in 2013. Did that 2013, 2014, and Coach Rick called me back and wanted me to come run his recruiting department in 2015. Um, I didn't want to move off the field, but I told my wife we had a chance to come out to Athens, and she left before I could get it out of my mouth. So. Came back, to, uh, came back to Georgia in 2015. As you know, it was Coach Rick's last season. Um, Coach Mark gave me the chance to stay on staff, all right, as, as uh, director of recruiting. But Coach Rick took me down to Miami as his tight ends coach and special teams coordinator. So I did that for three seasons. Once Coach retired, uh, Kirby called me back, and I've been very fortunate to be back coaching with Coach Smart at my alma mater very proudly since 2019. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, it, it, it's interesting that tight ends is a place that you've settled and seems yeah. like a place that you've always liked. Yeah. There's no question about the recruiting you've been able to do here. Yes, sir. Why do you think that is, uh, uh, that, that you've been able to identify and land the tight ends of the ilk of Brock Bowers and Darnell well, Washington? Well, the first thing I'll say is, you know, recruiting the group effort, getting it starts with the head coach, and there's not a better recruiter in the country than Kirby Smart, I'll tell you that. So when you have Coach Smart's influence, it's uh, – it's not as hard walking into a living room when you know you get Coach Smart behind you, right? Um, the other thing is the power of the logo. I mean, when you got the geo on your chest and you walk into a school, you get instant credibility, you get instant respect. So the fact that you got Georgia on your shirt and you got Coach Smart as your as your head coach, that, that makes the job not as hard, okay? Um, but I think the thing that we do a good job of here at Georgia is investing in relationships, okay? I think we do a great job of getting to know them as people and not just as prospects and as players. I think that's where we went out most times. Is people appreciate the genuineness that we have. Okay, we're real. We tell them how it is, and some like it and some don't. But most people appreciate how open we are with them. Uh, hey, Coach, I know we've been talking a little bit about recruiting, so I, uh, I'll transition to a couple of true freshmen you got. You got to work with Lawson Lucky yep. a lot through spring, and, and now Pierce is, is here a lot more. What have you kind of seen from them, and um, how far do you think they've come already? Yeah, they, um, you know, it's – Kind of the, the new thing in college football is these kids to graduate high school early. And uh, both of them had the opportunity to come in in January, and I think it was very beneficial. Um, more so for Lawson and Pierce, just from the fact that Pierce got hurt. You know, Pierce got hurt practice three in the spring, and 
with a collarbone injury and, and missed the rest of spring. He, he was able to come back right for the time that we started summer workout. So he's been with us full speed since the summer. Um, but I've seen great progress in, in, in both those guys. Obviously, Lucky had a, a very good spring, uh, took advantage of, of the reps that he got and, and uh, was able to make some plays and show that he was able to potentially maybe do something for us on our offense. And, and Pierce is right there too, okay? Pierce is getting his opportunity um, this camp. And one thing he was nervous about was, was playing tight end. You know, Pierce never played tight end. Pierce played receiver in high school. And a lot of these new age tight ends that we recruit, they don't play tight end. It's hard to find tight ends in high school. So a lot of them are projection prospects. You're projecting them to be a tight end. And Pierce was one of those guys that has, has come in and has embraced his role and is learning to play the position. And I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very pleased with how both of them have performed at this point. Todd, you got, obviously got to work with uh, Munkin closely the last yeah. three years. You sat next to him in the press box. Yeah. But you know Mike yeah. very well. You worked with him, too. What, what's your view on the dynamic here? How much changes? How much does it? First off, well, what, a, what a blessing, right, to be able to say you were worked for Todd Munkin for three seasons and then, I mean, Coach Bobo ha has had a major influence on my career since I was a student, right? He was here from day one, and my, many people don't know this, my, my wife was his nanny back when I was a student in GA. Like, my wife was their nanny. Coach Bobo, they, she, was, she was their nanny when he had five kids under five, five-year-old, three-year-old triplets, and a one-year-old, and she was there working with Laney, Miss Laney, and, and, and Coach full-time. So very, very close relationship with Coach Bobo. But, um, you know, I, I don't think much is going to change. I mean, we've been very successful on offense the last couple of years here. And, and uh, you, were, you know, it's our job to continue to find ways to be explosive, continue to ways, find ways to protect the football and, you know, put ourselves in the best position to win the football game. I think Coach Bobo understands what Coach Smart wants, okay, whether that's Munkin calling the plays or Bobo calling the plays, Coach Smart wants it one way. And uh, that's the way we're going to do it. Yeah, Coach, you've got an extremely talented and deep room. Looks like all signs indicated dig getting even deeper. How do you keep guys happy? And that was a simple question or a complicated question. How do you keep guys happy? Well, I mean, I don't think it's about, you know, kid, I'll say this, okay? Kids are happy when they get reps, right? And I think we do a phenomenal job at Georgia of getting kids reps, okay? One, that increases their development. Okay, and two, it keeps them involved. And so the way we practice here, I think is unlike any other place in the country. Okay, and so the way Kirby organizes these practices and, and they y'all been out there, there's not one person standing around ever, ever, not even the injured guys, right? So kids are constantly getting better. And if they feel like they're working and they feel like they're getting developed, then naturally they're gonna be happy. Now it does come back that at some point there's only one football. And so you got to find a way to get your, your playmakers involved and, and show them that they could have a chance to, to have a, a, a change in the game plan, you know, a chance to game plan. So, um, you know, the, these guys, specifically, specifically in my room, okay, I, I think they're a special group, okay? I think they're very well connected. They truly care about each other, okay? And we talk about feeding the fire, okay, and being truly selfless, okay? Put the team first in all that we do. And you got to check your ego. And in today's world, guess what? Checking your ego, especially when you have five stars and four stars, it's hard to do, okay? But at this place, you better learn to do that real fast. And I think my guys have done a great job of doing that. So presumably it's uh, <clears throat> Brock's last season. Are you savoring the, the uh, days with him, the practices with him? And you know, what, um, what kind of makes him uh, tick? Like what, what's, what makes him so um, you know, special, effective and uh, dangerous and, you know, what kind of buttons do you push on a daily basis with them? Okay. Um, first off, I, I don't know last season, twos, I don't know that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know that he, he he's such a special kid, okay? And I don't, I'm not trying to be broad there, okay? Here's what I mean by that. Any box you create, he checks it, okay? I mean, just from a kid standpoint, all right? The kid's the hardest worker I've ever met, okay? He'll be the first one to breakfast. He'll be the first one in the training room to get his ankles taped. He'll be the first one in the meeting room. Okay, he'll be the last one to lead the field. If we do a 10-yard sprint, he'll be the first one to win the 10-yard sprint. If we do a 30-yard sprint, he'll be the first one to win the 30-yard sprint. You get the point I'm making, right? And I think that's what makes him special. Yeah, he's, he's talented, right? He, he, he's got extreme talent. He can run, he can jump, he can catch. He's tough, okay? But what makes him special to me is just his competitiveness. He is the ultimate competitor. A kid don't want to lose anything, okay? 
And to be honest with you, I need to see Oscar Delt get reps. Okay, I need to see Austin Lucky and Pierce Sperling get reps. And when I take him off and limit some of his reps, he gets pissed off. He gets pissed off. Okay, I'm like, hey, Brock. He's like, what did I do wrong? Nothing, buddy. Just stand right here. It's okay. It's okay. And uh, you know what? You should want it that way. Kids should be pissed off when they don't get their reps. Okay, that tells you that he wants to be great. So I'm, I'm just thankful for the opportunity that I get to coach him, man. He's such a great kid. Yeah, how has coaching someone as special as Brock Bowers made you a better coach? Yeah, I just try to find ways not to mess him up, I guess now, you know? Okay, and, um, but he, you know, he, he challenges me to find new ways to reach him, right? He challenges me to find new ways to continue to make him a better tight end, right? To continue to improve upon maybe little things in his game that could help him possibly on the next level. And so that is a challenge because he is good at a lot of things. And so continue to find maybe new individual drills or, or new ways to perfect his run game technique or his pass protection or even his route running technique can, can improve at times is, is that's a challenge. And, um, but he does push me to become a better coach because of that. Okay, and the other thing is I gotta find ways to get him to hush in the meeting. Y'all think he doesn't talk, but in the meeting he wants to answer every question. I'm like, hey buddy, hey, just let, let the freshman answer the question. I know that you know it. Okay, um, but he he is uh, he, he's been a blessing to me as a coach, and um, the, the other thing is he, he set a precedent, right? He he set a standard of how you should practice at tight end. He set a standard of how you should watch tape at tight end. Like the best thing for Oscar Dell was being here and seeing how Brock Bowers does it. The best thing for Lawson Lucky and Pierce Sperling is being here and seeing how Brock Bowers does it. So hopefully, at, long after he's gone. The legacy that he's left stays for many years about how you're supposed to work, how you're supposed to approach each day, and how you become a pro, man, because that guy's a pro in everything that he does, and hopefully that leaves a lasting legacy. Todd, looking at Oscar, how far do you feel like he's come in his time in the program? Yeah, he, he, I'm, I'm very proud of how hard he's worked because he was another one of those kids that was a projection tight end. I know whatever the ratings were. We don't, we don't look at that. He was rated high as a tight end. I looked at him as a player. And obviously, you know, we, we liked what we saw from tape and, and from camp. And, um, but he had such a long way to go, okay? Um, and he, he, was, he put himself in a position to contribute last year, and he did that. And then when it mattered the most, when Darnell came out in the, uh, in the semifinal game, he was able to go in there and perform at a high level. Okay, but even from that point, even from the Ohio State game, the growth he's had from spring to summer to now has been exponential. Um, I'm very proud of how hard he's worked. He, he's had to, to be honest with you, he knows that there's a void with Darnell leaving, okay, that we gotta have at the point of attack from a tight end standpoint, okay? He knows that he has the potential to fill that void. So he really had to attack his blocking technique, okay, um, his run game fundamentals, his pass protection fundamentals, and he has done that. Cause that's when he came in, that's where he, what he lacked the most. And so from where he came in to where he is now, I'm, uh, I'm very, very pleased with how hard he's worked to get himself to this point. Got time for two more questions. Uh, to follow up on what you were saying about finding new ways to challenge Brock, uh, what did you actually do to try to, to do that like we were talking about before? And, so, and another thing is, you mentioned route running, like what, what about it can be, can be better? Yeah, that, so it's, it's, there's very few things, right? But um, you know, you, what, what, what Coach Smart challenges to do is, is always Look for NFL clips. These, these kids got the ultimate respect for guys that play in the NFL, right? So you're constantly trying to find clips from the NFL, of maybe a Kelsey or a Kittle or the great tight ends, and you're looking at things that they do that are similar to what we do that can show Brock, hey, maybe you at the top of your route, you can sink your hips a little bit more. You can rage out of your break a little bit faster to create a little bit more separation. That way you don't have to make that superstar catch with a guy draped all over you. If you sink your hips and run your feet a little bit more like Travis Kelsey, You'll be wide open. You'll, you'll, you'll have more space. You'll have more separation at the top of that route. So, you know, that, that's the best thing that we do, to be honest with you, is try to find some clips from the NFL to show these guys because that immediately grabs your attention when you, when, it, when you put the logo of the Browns or the Chiefs or, or the Eagles or somebody like that up there on the screen. We're like, whoa, okay, that's how they do it? Boom. So that's probably the best thing that we do. You mentioned being back at your alma mater. There's a couple of other coaches that can say that too. Yeah. How do you feel that adds to the passion that you have and, and your ability to sell playing football here in Athens? Yeah, and so you know we actually use that in our recruiting presentations. The fact that I don't know the exact number, okay, um, 26, 24, something like that, that we say 
we have 26 former alumni, okay, that are now working in our program in some capacity, okay? And what that illustrates is Georgia's willingness to welcome people back, okay? The university's willingness to, it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. It's not just gonna take care of you for your time here in Athens, okay? But it does have the ability to help you find a career, right? And so it also shows recruits and parents that once you leave Athens, a lot of people wanna come back to Athens, right? It's a great place to raise a family. It's a great place to you know, build a career. It's a great place to go to school. I mean, you guys know, there's no place like this anywhere else in the country. And so I'm, I'm very thankful to have the opportunity to coach my alma mater um, and, and Coach Marsh afforded me that, Josh Brooks has afforded me that, and uh, I'm very thankful for that. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Kyle. Good. Y'all have a good day.